Hi there. Now, if you've watched the previous video in this series on using logarithms, you'll know that I introduced you to these three rules, the multiplication rule, division rule, and power rule. But what we did was just use these rules without any proof. What I want to do in this video is to show you how we can prove these three results. So if we start with the first one, the multiplication rule, the log of xy in base a is equal to the log of x in base a plus the log of y in base a, then to prove it, let's just start with proof. Okay. And if I let, let's say, the log of x in base a equal p, then from this it follows that a to the power p must equal x. Basic rule of logarithms. Let's suppose I call this result 1. And also suppose I let the log of say y in base a equal q. Then from this it must follow that a to the power q equals y. And I'll call this result 2. Therefore, if I multiply x and y together, x times y must equal, from these results here, a to the p multiplied with a to the power q. And the rule for indices is to add the powers. So this is exactly the same as a to the power p plus q. Now if I take the logs to both sides in base a, then by definition the log of xy in base a must be equal to p plus q. And if that's the case, then we can see from these two results here that this must be equal to the log of x in base a plus, for q, now the log of y in base a. So therefore, you can see we've proved that result. The log of xy then in base a is equal to the log of x in base a plus the log of y in base a. Now the division rule is really much the same as what we've just done here. So for the proof of this, let's just write down proof. What I've got is x divided by y must be equal to a to the power p from 1 divided by a to the power q from 2. And by the rules of indices, we subtract the indices. So this is the same as a to the power p minus q. If I take logs now to both sides, to base a, then I've therefore got the log of x divided by y in base a is equal to p minus q. And we can see that p, just as before, is the log of x in base a, and q is the log of y in base a. So therefore, what we've got is the log then of x divided by y in base a is equal to the log of x in base a minus the log of y in base a. And that proves that result. Now finally, we've got the power rule. So for the proof of this one, we've got the log of x to the power n in base a. Well, x to the power n is going to be repeatedly multiplying x with itself n times over. So it would normally look 
something like that with x repeated n times. What I'll do is I'll just put a subscript here though, x1, x2, x3, all the way down to xn. But remember, they're all exactly the same value, just x repeated n times over. Now, we've already proved the multiplication rule, so we can see that if I multiply any values together, then this is the same as taking separately the log of each one of them and adding them together. So it's the log of, say, x1 in base A plus the log of x2 in base A. And that's going to carry on. We're just going to keep adding all the way up to the final value, which is the log of xn in base A. So I've written this down n times, and each one of these is exactly the same value. So can you see that if I repeat this n times, this addition just becomes n times the log of x in base A. And that proves that result. Okay?